All right, All right, and we're back. We have Philadelphia Freedom and Houston Cosmos Quidditch Club. This is the third game of the day for both teams. They are both 0-2 coming into this one. Uh, you were just saying something about the Phillies keeper. Yeah, I think you're going to see a lot. You have a lot of LQ experience with Philly Freedom, especially Vinny Iannucci, number 20, and Lexi Rafa. That is a missed beat behind the hoops. Philly is able to take a shot. It does not go in. And number three on Philly is also beat out. Number 78 comes away with the quaffle and is taken down immediately by a tackle. Yeah, I think you see their Iannucci skill, especially coming prominent there. I want to see Philly Freedom get their offense a little bit more together. Um, I wasn't seeing as much of a shape as much of a passing around that they needed to really be able to get that strong ball. Walton, the keeper for Houston, is looking for an opening, trying to get a uh, the feeder in front here to open something up. Instead, there is a missed beat, and all of the Philly players have ex uh, gotten back into their zone. The quaffle gets into chaser number goes to number 20, that's Vinny Iannucci, the keeper. That was number 53, Russell, who was covered up right underneath the hoops. Number 20, Iannucci, passes over into the corner to number 3, passes back to the top of the key to number 10. Uh, number 43 misses the pass in the corner, and so it's a lot of good passing for Philly on that drive, but it did not come away with it. I definitely saw more of a shape there, right? I saw more of that passing around and more of that idea. But I think what we were missing there was some of the good throws themselves. The shapes that they were making, the the ideas behind it were great, but we just need a little bit execu better execution on the actual pass itself. Houston trying the same offense with Walton walking slowly behind one beater. And then there's a cut to the hoops, and it is in by number 73. Yeah, I think that was a great cut in there. Um, especially with his height, he's clearly able to reach around and be able to move past the uh, zone style or the keeper at the small or the chaser at the small hoops that was defending it. Made it a perfect goal. That was a very nice move by Houston to go up 10 to 9. Iannucci takes a shot pass that goes behind the hoops, it's cleaned up, and then pass from far behind the hoops. It's probably ill-advised. Walton is able to snag it out of the air. Defender, um, we haven't seen her use it too much today, and especially to a good effect. It's a good ball movement from Philly again, but they're still just not able to make anything go. They're not able to make any conversions so far. Yeah. I'm having a call right now. I think. Yeah, you're exactly right. Philly Freedom is having some good movement. They're having some good ideas, some good strategy, but for some reason they're not cleaning up what should be easy goals at this point with how they're playing. And after that, it is still 10-0 with Houston in the lead. Oh, no, nope, I think... There's a score adjustment. Yes, it was called a good goal okay, for great. Philly. Great. Uh, it 
was wondering about that a lot, but it has finally been put on the board, so it's 10 10. So you can see here that Philly Freedom is doing a zone defense. So they have two chasers, or a chaser and a keeper, up at the hoops, and then it allows essentially the other two chasers to create a zone that you don't want the people to pass through, right? You create the strong defense rather than a traditional match. Yes. Oh, and we... number 77, uh, 97, Eric Wagner was able to just step in front of that last pass and take it away. But then Philly playing sloppily still almost gave it away again immediately. But they're able to clean up because of the pass going wildly beyond the hoops. Yeah. I think both teams are honestly playing a little sloppy. I've seen both of these teams play before. Uh, and I don't know whether it's the combination of the hail, the cold, just a long day, but we're not seeing them at their playing their best. Elizabeth Stone is contacted and then takes a break for it. She then makes a long pass behind the hoops, but that one is knocked away and then is covered by Houston Cosmos. Again, that's just that sloppy play. They played that a little bit smarter. I think they would have come away with something. Mm -hmm. Walton continues very slow, methodical, looking for an open break through this Philly zone. Dylan Freeman in for Houston now. There is a Ooh. lot of contact on the far side of the field with two players, neither of whom had a ball. I think what we're seeing on Houston's side is that they tend to be, they tend to take it very slowly up and then look for ways that one pass that we can then do to make someone drive and score or drive and dish. Um, but I think especially once you get to the club level and you're starting to play with higher players, that's not really going to work that much. Yeah, I like to see a little bit more creative offense with multiple players getting involved, more passes, uh, using using the passing game as the way to beat the zone. If you just keep running up into it, you're going to have happen what's happened this time. Exactly. The zone's great at capturing drives. Mm -hmm. That's what it's made. You're cre you put the players in a position the defensive players in a position where they can essentially trap people who are driving. And then you also have a really strong goaltending skill by covering two goals at once that can help you block people as well when they're going for the drive. So it's not really the smartest move here. I think Philly has a good idea with their philosophy about how they're passing through. Because um, Houston's also doing sort of a zone. But they're just not executing in that same way. I think one thing that we are seeing some good strong, we are seeing some really strong contact, sometimes to a fault. <laughs> yes. But um, I think that both of these teams are clearly fairly aggressive in their tackling. It looks as though the uh, Houston chaser did pick up a card for that contact off ball over on the far side of the field. So that's going to be one minute for them in the hoop or until Philly Freedom scores. It was a great block down to number 35, but it goes out. Yeah, that's just that sloppy, sloppy passes from Philly. They're, they got the right idea, but they can't get anything to connect. On the beater game, we have Houston in control. It'll be interesting to see what they do this. Are they going to allowed to create more lanes just my guess <laughs> or yeah. is it going to allow them to kind of pass it around more mm -hmm. cover some more people yeah. and they've got Dylan Freeman in at beater he's known as an extremely physical player they may be able to bring that to the beating game definitely takes some hard beats <laughs> just then and that was an attempt to make that same one pass drive and cut uh, and it doesn't seem to have worked out for Houston once again Philly is able to clean it up. Mm -hmm. Eric Wagner. Philly now has control. So let's see. I think that 
especially with how Philly is trying to play. I think that control really will help them be able to get that. It's just a question of... Yep, and Wagner drives through. Oh, he drove through three of the Houston players. One of the hoops fell down, tried to keep it and go back towards the tall hoop and was unable to do it. Houston now in the fast break going the other way. Walton steps up, passes across, and through and good. You hate to see a play work like that, right? Like, there was an unintentional dislodgement of the hoops, which happens, yep. but it prevented Wegner from being able to get what was an easy goal. And through that, you saw a great transition on Houston's side to be able to really take that. And then uh, what they always do, which is a drive and maybe a dish. Yep. Drive and dish, but that time it worked because Philly was unable to get set because it was the fast break, because basically because of that dislodged hoop. Ashton Jean Lewis, who should have been commentating with me last time, is now over on the field for Houston at Keeper. There is a referee conference going on. Toby March, head referee. Looks like Amanda Dallas. That could be wrong. Couldn't tell from here. Let me take a look. <laughs> Frank Minson, future Titans MLQ coach. A star player for the New York Warriors. New York. I guess they're just the Warriors. <laughs> Alright. That Philly is a rogues crew over there. The rest of the folks. Philly Freedom taking it up now. They have control. Both bludgers. What can they do with it? Houston trying to settle in. That pass is way too tall. Elizabeth Stone unable to catch that ball that was way over her head. I would not say, yeah, it's not her fault. It wasn't a great pass. And it was an interesting decision to try and pass across, especially when it seemed like, especially in the center, you had that movement. You know, it's always safer, especially in the rain, right? This uh -huh. ball here is going to be slick. It's not going to be as easy to grip it and get those control that you need for a long pass. Ashton doing that same play that oh, <laughs> attempted beat is blocked really easily. Number three on Philly is beat, and then Ashton is beat right as he tries to release the ball. And this will lead to a transition. Oh, but oh, Stone, sorry. Elizabeth Stone is beat right before she can get to the hoops. Number th See, Wagner picks Wagner it up. Is taking a, yeah, Wagner got that cleanup and then just drove all physicality through three of the Houston defenders. Uh, once again, Houston was unable to get set into their zone, and either team, if they're not set, they're not defending. Well, I think what you also saw there was a great reminder about how the game doesn't end in Quidditch, especially you have, uh, especially depending on where the beers are, you can strip that ball out. And Philly, which is an especially physical team, I think has that ability, and they're starting to realize that they can do that. You see Stone taking a lot stronger and a lot riskier uh, tackles, strips, things that you wouldn't necessarily do against uh, a team like Bosnia. Yeah. Wegner is able to clean it up. Houston, once again, unable to get anything out of their drive. Bludgers are now all off the field. Wegner has a clear lane, passes it across the field, but the hoop once again falls down. That medium-sized hoop on the left side is just not staying up for it. Well, you know, it also hit the top of it. It was a good, it was just one of those unlucky throws where you just hit the wrong point. Elizabeth Stone with a great shot from way beyond the keeper's own line goes in to make it 30 to 20. Elizabeth Stone definitely having a big pickup, but at, right as she starts to get the momentum, she comes out for Lexi Rafa and Vinny Iannucci coming on as keeper for Wagner. Um, this is their almost a variation of their starting line. It'll be interesting to see 
now that they have a better understanding of how Houston plays, they have a little bit more of that lead, they have that scoring momentum, what are they going to do? And Houston seems to be quite a bit further into their depth. They have new players out there. We'll get their numbers in just a moment here at um, a whole bunch of the positions. Number 67, uh, 57 with the Quaffle now. That's the first time I've seen 57 on the field. Um, that's uh, Ariel Hayabong. We're pausing right now for a ref conference. Do you have any idea what that could be about? No clue. I missed that as I was trying to look up the name of the player just a second ago, right as it was happening. Um, so this game has been very close, uh, mostly sloppy play on both sides, which I guess is not too surprising for two 0-2 teams on the day so far. Uh, do you see either team looking to possibly break away in the few, next few minutes? I, you know, maybe there's some bias here coming from the East Coast, but I do think that Philly Freedom usually plays better this than this and knowing their players and we're starting to see them pick it up i'm seeing a lot stronger plays from philly freedom now um i hope it was just a you know a sloppy start and i what it's looking like is maybe so my game my my bets on philly um i think it is going to be a low slow scoring game number 43 julia marks um, is uh, doing the quaffle distribution for Philly right now. Gets the ball behind to number one or seven. There and we go. And then they wind up getting it because this time, as we've been talking about, this time they pass twice and are able to get it through. If those passes, if those passes are crisp, they can get it in. Freeman moved back to a more familiar position at keeper. Uh, was definitely beat before that draw, before that dunk. Yeah, I mean, especially with something like that, yes, you can run through. People like that can run through uh, chasers, but you're not always necessarily trying to take them down when you're tackling at that point. You know, you want to slow them down so that way your beater can get it as well. Yeah, get in front of them, make them have to make that extra move, or just slow up, and then that beat comes in and, and gets them in the back, which is what happened just then. Nice pass behind it. Oh. oh, that was almost a nice, nice another goal for Philly. What I'm seeing in Philly is that there's definitely, I bet you that that ball is pretty wet uh, and pretty slippery because I'm seeing what are some pretty good, what are some fine passes and what seem to be at first good catches just slip out a little bit. And especially when you're at the hoop right there, you really need that fast reaction. That's why players like Mary Scott are so powerful at the hoop because they are able to quickly turn around. So when you have a slippery ball that prevents you from getting that speed where you have to take that extra second to really get a hold of it, it's gonna make those at the hoop goals a lot more difficult. Yes, definitely. It is really cold out here too. It's cold and wet. I'm barely able to hold on to my Coke Zero underneath a tent. I can't imagine what it's like for these players out there. And that little pass uh, shot falls in, which is probably what Houston needed to get that on the board. I think the question here, I wonder if Lexi Rafa is going to get a card for a uh, tackle from behind. Oh. <laughs> so, okay, so it was actually a jersey pull from Lexi Rafa on the goal scorer. Um, usually that wouldn't mean a minute in the penalty box, but because there was a goal, it automatically negated it. So Lexi Roth is still going to stay on. Yep, and it is 40-30 for uh, Philly still in the lead, but that goal does bring Houston back closer again. I want to see Vinny Iannucci doing more. He's a really strong player, and I just haven't seen him really taking his moments, but it looks like he might have one now. And it's a nice cut and then a pass over the back and then another pass another pass and then a lot of contact a lot of contact a little high looks like it may be about to be called i think that's on josh cohen number seven yes yeah that is a yellow card 
So that's yeah, mm. neck. Uh, well, it was kind of in his chin um, on Ashton Jingles. Yeah, so that means that he's not going to be. Uh, that means it's going to be a minute in the penalty box. You're going to see them trading headbands here. Essentially, you always need a keeper on the field. So they had to trade the headband so that the person out is not a keeper. Let's see if Josh Cohen can finish this, though. Yeah, Cohen does not have any help. and does have three defenders in front, but there are there is a good pass to two of his other players here, and that one did not go through once again. I hate to see it. You know, Cohen's a really... Um, a really sneaky player. You know, he's a, he's able to get through some stuff, but just wasn't able to finish there. Houston looking for an opening. Philly able to set back up two bludgers in their zone. There's the first pass. The pass back is broken up by Iannucci. Yeah, Philly has really settled into defense now, too. Yeah. I, I've seen this before with Philly. They are definitely a team that needs to warm up a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and it and is now actually warming up as well. The sun has finally come back out. Um, oh, that shot is no good, and then there's a beat, and Houston is able to cover the loose quaffle and get it back into the keeper's hands for another stop. It's still only 40-30. It's any team's game. Philly's playing a really high zone, too, I've noticed. People are really pressure. There's a lot of pressure on Houston. But it also makes it a lot easier for them to be essentially eaten up. This is Acevedo and at keeper is able to block the bludger from the front, but is unable to block two bludgers at the same time. So Philly once again cleans it up, and Wagner comes out with the I, waffle. I wish I could say it was great defense on Philly's part, but it just felt like sloppy quidditch overall. Houston settled back in, still with only one bludger. Philly bringing a bludger into this offensive drive, trying to create some chaos. And Lexi Rafa still just cannot get a handle. Yeah, I mean, I honestly feel like that was a great move. On You had some great beating um, from Houston's main beater that been in this entire time. Um, he really ate up the defense in the back. But that's um, uh, that's Raber number seven, right, Kevin Raber? Good recovery. Yeah, nice from recovery Houston. from Houston. They're able to make a drive this time. A lot of lot of contact. That's clear. And there is an oh, there was an open player over by the short hoop. That beat got the keeper after the shot. What's the call going to be? All right, that is a penalty on number 43 for Philly. I think you saw it. Uh, when the Houston chaser was on the short hoop trying to get that goal, she's going to get the ball back. Right by the hoop. It's essentially not a guaranteed goal because you have Lexi Rafa right there, and Lexi Rafa can hit. The question is, can Lexi Rafa not hit from behind, especially from how they are, everyone is positioned in that situation? Yeah, and does the Houston chaser does not seem to have any help on that side of the field. And there is a bludger in number 21's hands just a couple feet away. And yeah, Ro Lexi Rafa is able to completely wrap up and just destroy that uh, opportunity for Houston. It was really not set up in their favor with no. the way that that broke down, with the way people moved after the penalty. That's why penalties can be weird sometimes. 
you know, <laughs> it's a weird situation of who is on, who is affected, and who is where. Oh, you're seeing the beater game, some great survival. Wagner is able to go all the way through and knock it in just by physicaling his way through this pretty stout Houston hitters. Well, you're also seeing a lot of chaos on the beater game, I think, which is what allowed them him that opportunity to be hit and not have to get, keep on being hit and not have to get that. Sorry, we're getting another card. It seems like a delay of game. So it's a blue card on Houston for delay of game um, for throwing the quad sure what caused it. <laughs> All right, so after the delay of game penalty, the quaffle is being turned over to Philly. It is 50-30, and because of that really, really painful penalty on Houston, Philly winds up with an immediate uh, opportunity for another goal. Lexi Rafa in the center of the field with the quaffle. They'll probably take a couple minutes, regroup, let the rest of the offense catch up. Interestingly enough, you have two people, on e a person on each side. Rafa tries to pass it off to Cohen, but is immediately blocked. That's going to be a contact from behind. Rafa has got to watch that. She has good physicality. She has strength, but she keeps on tackling from behind. She's trying to contest it, but... <laughs> Listen, there are some that are contestable. That was not. Yeah, that one was pretty clear. Right. Probably good that the uh, Philly coach comes over and um, calms Rafa down because Rafa was about to get a little bit too heated with the referee. Toby March will let a lot go, but not if not if uh, the referee if Rafa were to come too strong at him. Slow moving drive from Houston. With Walton looking for that one drive and cut. Tall hoop has fallen down. That attempted pass is over the head of the chaser behind the hoops and it's pretty easily cleaned up by Philly. They have no beaters on right now. I think Cohen is gonna be able to get this decisively. Oh, what? But that was that was going in until the Houston player ran directly into the hoop. The referees are now deciding whether that definitely would have gone in. Because that, that was definitely 100% a goal, if not for that dislodgement. But I think just like with any sport, if you don't know what's happening, it's not visible. Right. This one in particular feels weird because there's only like five things happening. Yeah, because it's very different than most. It's like a combination of multiple different sports. Right. So there's not like a clear objective, per se. Like there is nothing. Like if the objective is to score a point, sure. Yeah, Perry Walton upset because Perry's been given the yellow card, but it was actually the chaser who ran into the hoop and dislodged it. Okay, looks like they have switched it. And number 78, um, Acevedo is actually getting the card. Philly gets the ball back, but unfortunately that does cost them a sure thing goal just for a yellow card on this on this part of Houston. Which is really disappointing, right? That was a goal that was taken out. Oh, but it looks like... Oh, it looks like, yeah. It's going to be a question of hands. 
this, the the bludger there and the keeper right in front. It's gonna it make it hard. Very difficult. He's gonna reset game. it. They're yeah. gonna pull back and regroup. Smart move on Cohen. Yeah, if Cohen had tried to go in, that was gonna be an immediate loss, and this power play would have been lost opportunity. Legner tries again. This time, this time Philly is able to do it. Thank God. But it looks like there might be some sort of call going on right now. All right. Yet another conversation with the referees. Did you see what this may be a call about? I don't. Oh, I don't it know. It is a yellow card on. Mike. No. Do you need any commentators for anything? Oh no, it's on number twenty-one, the beater on and Philly. No. I can't remember if I actually submitted. The it looks like it may cancel the goal out. I was not in any flop yeah. Today, so so I the I assistant know. referee is making a penalty call on the Philadelphia beater. But it, it okay, so it, it has not canceled the goal. It must have been after the goal. Yeah, yeah, fair. All right, that was 20 minutes. So that we're going to be taking essentially a half here before we come out for the snitch. And now it is 60 to 30. So with the 70 point set score, the set score will be 130 um, and the snitch will be 35 points. Houston is pretty close for as uh, kind of sloppily as they have played for this entire game. Uh, what do you think will be the key to victory if they were to come from behind? I think there's a lot of opportunity for driving when you have um, when you're in snitch on pitch because you don't have as many go goals on, or because you don't have the beaters coming at you they're focusing off in a lot of their sights on the snitch um, I think that gives them an opportunity especially with their style that they love which is this drive and dish um, or this one pass, pass and drive to be able to hit it if I were them I would put out some of their biggest drivers I would put out their people who can run through that who can run through the defense um, that's to me what they would do because I think that's how they're going to get it what would be great is that they could also get that cinch catch um, yeah. 30 it, it is a bit of a difference especially in a low scoring game Yes, they've had 30 for how long a while yeah this this has not been a lot of opportunities for Houston to actually get a score so if they could get the snitch catch they would be in they would be much better off in trying to come back because trying to hit 130 on all quaffle goals is going to be difficult. However, um, we have not seen a snitch catch in club play on this field yet today. Interesting. All right, we have restarted here at the 20 minute mark. The snitch is on the field. The Seekers will be coming out in uh, probably 10 seconds from now. Um, they, it looks like Houston is trying to take advantage of having fewer beaters in the game, but the pass is not completed, although number 63 is able to pick it up. And Perry Walton is able to just drive through, which Houston can do, especially if Philly does not have, just as you were talking about, Luke, if Philly does not put their beaters in this quaffle game, Houston can drive it over and over. Which, and they shouldn't. They shouldn't put their beaters in the quaffle game. Um, Philly should be focusing on that snitch, especially with a seeker like Iannucci, someone who can catch. Iannucci makes a move. Oh, almost had it, but it fell off. Wagner gets it in to Stone. There's a lot of extracurricular contact. We're going to have an equipment check right now. We've been seeing this snitch shorts fall, the snitch fall off the shorts. 
fairly often, um, which is a problem, especially when it comes to sustained play. I think what we're going to see here, this is my guess, is we're going to see a lot of trading of goals, uh -huh. which is going to favor Philly. Yeah. Right. A trade doesn't ma A trade just gets them one goal closer yeah. to scoring. What you really need is you need Houston to be able to lock down that defense to be able to catch right up. Yeah. But not seeing that right now. Yeah. Yeah. One goal at a time. It will just take seven times of that or six more times of that now for Philly to get what they want. Are we today um, trying to replace the stick? Looks like they might be trying to replace the yes, snitch. Yes, The snitch was not sticking. Seems as though the problem... Eh, seems as though there may be a bit of a problem with Velcro. But we are going to try now with the... Um, I hope that second tail is off the field. Um, we are going to try now to catch back into the action. Okay. It is 70 to 40. Houston is driving back up the field. Walton trying to make a move. Oh! There's a dish out this time, and it's good. Walton. But it looks like he might have had a stitch cash from Ianichi. He did a beautiful crossover with one arm to get the stitch to open up his right side, so that way he could sneak his hand in. Let's see if they call it clean. I personally think it is, but I'm not the ref. They do give the snitch tail back to the snitch. But it is good. It is good. So it is 105 to 40. Now Philly is really in control. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> this is Philly's game now, right? It's their game to lose. I don't think they're going to lose it, but we'll see. Frank Minson putting the bludger down on the ground. And Philly is able to get possession of it. That's a hard shot from Liz Stone, but it goes nowhere near the hoop. It was a dumb shot. <laughs> it's, uh, Philly has the shape. They can do it. I don't know why Stone would take that sort of chance, especially when they could have just waited. There wasn't any pressure coming on them to cause them. To, I didn't see any to cause them to make that goal uh, or to try and make that shot. But yeah, if I was Philly right now, I'd want to end this game because they still got another one coming. Yep, it's a roll in from Acevedo. I think what you're seeing here is you're really seeing Houston being able to, what they've started to figure out is how to create chaos in that zone. The zone's really great when you're in it, but if you're able to create that chaos, you're able to beat out both of those chasers, especially when they're that high, it's going to make that transition difficult. And that's where Houston is able to find those moments for those goals. Yes, definitely. And it is now 105 to 60. Philly's still in the lead, but Houston, I think, still thinks they have a chance to come back here. <sighs> Rafa had nowhere to go. There was a beater right on her behind the hoops. I'm really seeing a lot of the strongest play from Houston right now coming from their beater core. I think that's what's creating this opportunity. That's what's keeping them alive right now. They are only four behind. <laughs> if yes. they can make another goal, then I do think it could be uh, in their game. Freeman's beat out. Acevedo's making a drive. Gets taken down by Wagner. But recovers. But the recovery is good. That's two more shots, both missed. That's yeah, two yeah, offensive rebounds of Acevedo on his own shots, but none of them go in. Thank God Philly 
caught in by their goals. Um, that was some good diving there. Let's see if they can start to, in this offense, finish it. They only need three more goals. Uh, Houston has been very stout in their zone and have bludger control. And they have probably got their physical line in, as you mentioned earlier, being the key to victory for them. Wagner's looking for an opening, tries to get the zone to collapse to him, goes over the top. That shot goes through. Woo! Great hands on number 35. But what's it going to be Rachel in the Yuri. transition? And Wagner takes Freeman down. That is a good tackle. The ball gets out. Yes, that bludger must have been friendly fire. And, oh, the... Ooh. The, chase, the Houston Chaser is taken down after being beat without the ball, but it's not called. It was accidental. Wagner. Somehow, it is now 110 to 70. It should be 111. They're fixing it right now. Oh. 112? 111. <laughs> 110 to 70. 110, right? 110 to 70 yeah. is what it should be. All right. 110 to 70. Two goals away for Philly. And there is another one. I'm seeing them do a lot better job being able to take advantage of their female players. And especially in those back hoop positions, being able to use those fast hands. All right, so there's a timeout for Houston here at 112, or 120 to 70. Um, this is goal to, win, goal to go for Philly. Houston would have to get six unanswered in order to come back. I think they probably should have taken their timeout a little bit earlier. I think so too. Um, It is once again very chilly. We are about to restart on the whistle, and here we go. Houston basically has to get a goal every time. And great blocking on Philly's side. You saw a real control over at the hoops. They have control. Yeah, they have control. Taking it back down, trying to get this last goal to win. Woo! And oh, the beat. It's picked up by Wegner, who drives through and in, and that will do it. That looks good to me. Looks like 